Tonight will be um, a little bit different and we will explore a quite famous sutta which uh, is called the Anapanasati Sutta, the Buddha's instruction on what is most widely known as mindfulness of breathing. And what I uh, translate as the breath as a reminder. And this this sequence where the Buddha is explaining this very uh, this quite quite important meditation instructions in his uh, teaching. Uh, of course, there are many ways that it has been interpreted, but I will here read it to you in the way that the Buddha, in fact, said it. And it is quite a wonderful sutta, uh, very, uh, very well known, very um, influential in the Buddha's teaching for many reasons. And it not only touches about um, this, what we call mindfulness of breathing, which I, I refer to as cultivating awareness using the breath as a reminder. But it's a bit of a longer name, so <laughs> I, I don't pull it out too often. And um, it is not only the sequence that is talked about, but how the sequence fulfills, in fact, the four resting places of awareness, the four foundations of mindfulness the Satipatthanas, and how it also fulfills the seven supports of awakening. So it is a very complete sutta with very complete meditation instructions. And there are many parts to it that we can use, that learn and use to skillfully in whatever we're practicing, really. Even when we're practicing metta, the Brahma Viharas, it comes in very, very handy. It's like um, I compare it often to a toolbox of the Dhamma. <laughs> so sometimes we have uh, some situations arising and we just pull the one tool of uh, one little part of that, th these meditation instructions. We just uh, use it and then we continue our way. So it's very useful. And um, as the Buddha um, often did, he would often teach the Brahma Viharas, metta, uh, karuna, compassion, joy, and calm or steady awareness before he would teach uh, Anapanasati, the breath as a reminder, for many reasons, but um, mainly the Brahma Viharas give us a very strong and quick base in wholesome states. They really make it very, um, the, the mind becomes very uplifted and aware quite quickly if we really thoroughly undertake the practice. And I like to keep these instructions for later during the retreat when everybody has had a good dip in the Brahma Viharas and are very familiar with them and the sequence. Um, of course there are many ways of working with them but uh, and now we can we are almost uh, not over, but it is day eight, so we don't have a whole lot of time left in our retreat. And here, these meditation instructions are quite helpful to bring the practice further sometimes, or maybe shed some light in some areas that how we're using the Brahma Viharas, how we could understand it in another light. And also this sutta, like I mentioned, is uh, quite 
complete, whereas it it deals with the satipatthanas and the bojangas, the supports of awakening, which are very salient features of the Buddha's teaching. And personally, I find that this sutta in particular is particularly um, the Buddha, in fact, explains the satipatthanas and the supports of awakening particularly well in this sutta where it really makes sense it's very clear how it works and it's very simple so i um, think it's a very good sutta to um, to learn and to uh, have in our pockets or in the back of our minds to help us understand or have a more complete understanding of the Buddha's teaching. And not only for these reasons is it particular, but also for the setting. And this is a quite particular setting where we have a lot of elders, uh, elder monks that are uh, teaching these uh, younger monks. And this is... Um, this kind of setting is not everywhere in the suttas, I would say. It's quite rare that we have a very uh, precise um, environment like this where the, all these elder monks are actually teaching the younger monks, and which uh, puts a little bit more uh, emphasis on this was a very, uh, uh, like a cornerstone stone teaching of the Buddha and gives it quite a bit of importance. And without further ado, I will begin. <laughs> this is, this I have heard. Once the awakened one was living at Sawati, at the eastern monastery on Migara's mother's terrace. This is a Visaka, the very virtuous supporter lady of the Buddha and the Sangha. Together with many highly realized elder disciples, the Venerable Sariputta, the Venerable Maha Moggallana, the Venerable Maha Kassapa, the Venerable Maha Kachana, the Venerable Maha Kotita, the Venerable Maha Kapinna, the Venerable Maha Chunda, the Venerable Anuruddha, Revata, and the Venerable Ananda, and many others. So these are all basically all the highest chief disciples of the Buddha. And at that time, elder monks were guiding and teaching new monks. Some elder monks were guiding and teaching ten monks, some twenty monks, some thirty monks, and some even up to forty monks. And those new monks were experiencing wonderful progress. Then on that day of the Uposatha, the fifteenth, full moon night of the Pavarana ceremony, after the rains, the Awakened One was sitting in the open, surrounded by the Sangha of monks. The Pavarana ceremony is at the end of what we call the Vasa, the three months rains retreat. The monks get together and the Pavarana ceremony is at the end of the Vasa. Monks invite other monks to tell them what, what they could have done better. <laughs> or what they've done wrong. So it's this, uh, because usually monks would never tell, or we, we, it's on our rules, we can't say things about other people in their back. But now this is a very special opportunity <laughs> to monks, uh, in fact, invite others to tell them to say what they could have done better, and things like that, for these three months. And then it's over can't say anything. <laughs> the Awakened One, while keeping silent, looked around at the Sangha of monks, and then he said, I am glad about this practice, monks, 
This kind of practice gladdens my mind. I could say the same thing about your practice. Monks deploy even more determination to arrive at the unarrived, to attain the unattained, and to realize the unrealized. I will stay here in Sawati until Kamudi in four months. Having heard this, monks of the country came down to Sawati to visit the awakened one. Then with even more determination, the elder monks guided and taught the new monks. And those new monks kept experiencing wonderful progress. Then on the full moon night of the Uposata, the 15th, Komuda, four months later, the awakened one was sitting in the open, surrounded by the Sangha of monks. And while keeping silent, he looked around, and then he said, This company is rid of senseless talk. This company is done with senselessness. Cleansed to the pith, it stands. This is found in this company of monks. Such a company is worthy of support, worthy of welcomes, worthy of offerings, worthy of respect, an unrivaled field of goodness for the universe. This is found in this company. To such a company, even giving next to nothing generates a lot, and giving much generates incalculably. This is found in this company of monks. Such a company is hard to find in this world. It is not easily encountered. This is found in this company of monks. Such company is worth traveling to lay eyes upon, even if one were to carry one's own provisions for many leagues. This is found in this company of monks. In this company there are monks who are arahants, vanquisher of the mental tension, perfected ones, having done what had to be done, having laid down the burden, having achieved the true meaning, unleashed from the shackles of becoming, and released by perfect understanding. There are monks who, having undone the five worldly fetters, will appear instantaneously in a Brahma plane, bound to attain final unbinding there not subject to coming back to this world. There are monks who, having undone the three fetters, and with the gradual fading of desires and impatience and confusion, will return only once here. Having returned to this world, they will make an end of tension. There are monks who, having undone the three fetters, not subject to falling away, are securely bound for complete awakening. So these were the four kinds of people that we talked about earlier. There are monks who meditate completely dedicate to, dedicated to the development of the four resting places of awareness the foundations of mindfulness. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of the four excellent undertakings. This is the equivalent of the four right efforts. Of the four psychic potencies, the five faculties, the five powers, the seven supports of awakening and the eight spoked path of the awakened. This is what we find very often, what the Buddha said, uh, those seven things. It doesn't really have a particular name, but he said, those seven things that I taught you to develop. <laughs> and um, this constitutes another angle of, there is the eight-spoke path, but there are other things that uh, come 
also in his teaching that are included in bhavana, mental development. And these are these seven uh, uh, things altogether. The Eightfold Path is included in these things, of course. And all of these things are not completely different than the Eightfold Path. They are simply other ways that he had to develop the mind. And this is also known as the 37 uh, Requisites of uh, Awakening. So this is another name there, the Bodhipakiya Dhamma. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of boundless love, of boundless compassion, boundless joy, and boundless calm. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of unattractiveness and constant change. Anicca Sanya. There are monks who meditate completely dedicated to the development of awareness using the breath as a reminder. And see here once again the Buddha explains all of these methods and ends with this one. And that's often the, the way in which he would deliver this. So Monks, when developed, when developed and cultivated, meditation using the breath as a reminder is highly fruitful and very beneficial. When developed and cultivated, it fulfills the four resting places of awareness. When developed and cultivated, these four resting places of awareness fulfill the seven supports of awakening. When developed and cultivated, these seven supports of awakening fulfill release by understanding. And how is meditation using the breath as a reminder cultivated for it to be highly fruitful and very beneficial? Here, monks, Someone resorts to the forest at the root of a tree, in an empty cabin, sitting down with legs folded and body upright, having reposed one's awareness about oneself, breathing in with presence, breathing out with presence. This simply means being present. Now, one is aware of a long breath as a long breath, breathing in and breathing out. One is aware of a short breath as a short breath, breathing in and breathing out. Now here there's no particular thing that we're doing, we're just aware. And whatever the breath is doing, that's what it is. Yata Bhuta, we're seeing simply things as they are. There's no particular doing at this point. Then, at the third uh, instruction, it, it starts, the sikati, the training. Then one trains to experience the whole body breathing in and breathing out. One trains to calm the tension in the body breathing in and breathing out. Maybe that will uh, sound familiar when I usually uh, begin a lot of guided meditations like this. I, I do not mention the breath, but I do mention calming the tension and uh, perhaps experiencing your whole body. And here, there, um, there are some instructions uh, that say the whole being aware of the whole breath of the whole breath body or the body of the breath but this is not found in the original suttas this is from later uh, scriptures then one trains to experience joy <laughs> And now, my, some, some, some people of you here might have uh, practiced Anapanasati from different uh, traditions. And um, 
this this uh, little step here might not have been uh, might have been overlooked or not really talked about here. So one trains to experience joy, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to experience happiness, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to experience the movements of the mind, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to calm the movements of the mind, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to experience the mind, breathing in and breathing out. Now, see here we are starting to move towards uh, the mental realms. We're not talking directly about jhana here, but it is a bit what is meant also. It is another way of looking at this training. One trains to uplift the mind with joy. It comes again here. Interesting. Breathing in and breathing out. One trains to gather the mind breathing in and breathing out. One trains to untangle the mind, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to see constant change, breathing, at, breathing in and breathing out. This is simply just letting go. One trains to see calming down, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to see release, breathing in and breathing out. One trains to see breaking free, breathing in and breathing out. And here we have a bit of the later training. And this is another reason why I um, end uh, or I give these, uh, this discourse um, closer to the end where some of you perhaps might be uh, using um, mind as their uh, vehicle of awareness, observing mind as mind, and these final instructions are, uh, are also uh, very helpful to remind us of what the, the actual training is in the end, is to whatever is arising a bit like we saw yesterday, whatever is arising in the mind, we just see it's, it's changing, it's not staying, it's anicca, it's unabiding. And it continually calming down and here the direct instruction on niroda, to see niroda, to observe niroda. To, and niroda simply means to, to bring things all of these things to an end by calming them down continually and to see breaking free. So this is how we're cultivating the mind to completely liberate it. This is how to cultivate meditation using the breath as a reminder for it to be highly fruitful and very beneficial. Now, how is meditation using the breath as a reminder cultivated and developed so that it fulfills the four resting places of awareness? At the time when one is aware of a long breath as a long breath, breathing in and breathing out, one is aware of a short breath as a short breath, one trains to experience the whole body and one trains to calm the tension in the body. At that time, one is resting one's awareness upon body, knowing it as only body, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tensions and distractions. Atapi sampajanu sattima. And here we notice that this breath thing is simply there the whole time to remind us of the training, just to help us remember to do these things all the time. 
without we we never really stop breathing unless some states we <laughs> there is that option but <laughs> um, most likely we're all gonna keep breathing for this whole time and the breath is always there and so it's a very wonderful tool that we can use to remember because sati in fact means remembering to come to to remember to do these things not necessarily remember the breath there is no real instructions on looking at the breath itself it's with the breath the breath is in the background it's not really something we pay attention but it's it's just always there and if we're going to be aware of body as body for example well we're going to be aware of breathing because it's part of breathing and this is where it's going also. I say this is just another bodily experience bound up with the body that is breathing in and breathing out. So quite simple. There's nothing real oh, complicated here. It's simply knowing the body breathing in breathing out calming the tension in the body and this is all part of knowing body as body the first of the satipatthanas very very simple at the time when one trains to experience joy one trains to experience happiness one trains to experience the movements of the mind one trains to calm the movements of the mind. At that time, one is resting one's awareness upon sensations, knowing them as only sensations, intent, fully conscious and present, letting go of tension and distractions. I say this is just another kind of felt experience bound up amongst all that is felt that is wise attention breathing in and breathing out these are all sensation they're all all kinds of sensations happening we don't necessarily stop our awareness to one particular kind of sensation it's just it's just this thing that's happening and when we bring up the joy bring up the happiness uh, we are uh, we are developing the mind, we are developing awareness, but we are also practicing the satipatthanas. And this is in fact how we sharpen awareness a lot, at the beginning especially. And you see here, one thing that happens is that this, there is one particular sutta that is very, very, very famous. It is called the Satipatthana Sutta. And in that sutta, which is a very wonderful sutta, explaining at length what wise awareness is. But we do not, it is more about how to have this uh, and maintain this and understand what wise awareness is. A bit like discernment, like wisdom. But uh, we are not finding in that particular sutta a very elaborate explanation on meditation instructions. There are more how to understand reality, basically how to live using this wise awareness. And the first sequence of this training of anapanasati, which is knowing, breathing in, breathing out, long breath, as long breath, short breath as short breath, knowing the whole body, calming the tension in the body. This is found in the Satipatthana, but this is only the first part of Anapanasati. And Anapanasati, the rest isn't found in that particular sutta. But we do find the Satipatthanas explained very clearly here in this sutta also where there is more direct meditation instruction, I could say. 
where we will really truly see how the Buddha taught how to collect the mind through joy and letting go and this is really important for us to understand as we meditate because this is the principle of meditation that of this particular technique at the time when one trains to experience the mind breathing in and breathing out one trains to uplift the mind with joy one trains to gather the mind see joy and samadhi come always very close together one trains to untangle the mind at that time one is resting one's awareness upon mind simply knowing it as mind intent fully conscious and present letting go of tension and distractions i say there is no awareness with the breath for one who forgets to be present and fully conscious and to be present and fully conscious that is mind that is what that means that mind <laughs> and so by doing this we are alert we are mindful we are seeing mind as mind and the joy the more we will understand that this is the active principle of uplifting the mind with joy and letting go of everything else we do not necessarily cling to the joy in fact we will continue perfecting it with the letting go with the calming down and this is where it is going and the more we practice the more we will learn to see this as simply just a process we don't need to cling to it or to identify with it but it is simply the way the mind gets collected and that's pretty good <laughs> at the time when one trains to see constant change one trains to see calming down one trains to see the release or releasing awareness one trains to see breaking free breathing in and breathing out at that time one is resting one's awareness upon mental states knowing them as only mental states intent fully conscious and present letting go of tensions and distractions seeing with discernment tension and distractions are abandoned and one, one wisely attends with steadiness developed and c cultivated in this way monks meditation using the breath as a reminder fulfills the four resting places of awareness and now like i just said as we learn to continually let go not to hold on to all of this to see it is continually changing whatever arises in the mind like yesterday's talk on whatever perceptions arise in the mind whatever the jhana is they're just perceptions the jhana is not the meditation it is the landscape that we go through <laughs> it is the you know here at some point we go through a forest and then there's this thing and that thing and then we oh we go out of the forest there's this valley with the river and then we go over that bridge and then there's an open e expanse of there's a big field and then it looks very big very open and then we might get to a busy city and <laughs> and see oh okay what about i just keep driving past that city <laughs> And then we get to um, the desert in uh, Utah, for example, or something like that. 
and <laughs> that could be uh, seen as maybe of something like a plane of nothingness or bare awareness and so on. I haven't really thought of that uh, analogy before, so <laughs> maybe I'll give it some more thought later. <laughs> I'll keep you in touch. <laughs> and so the jhanas, they're not something that we actually hold on to. They're not the the object, they're not the vehicle of the meditation. They really are this landscape. They are what the we're learning to understand what the mind does through release and cultivating wholesome states. So this is what a gradually liberated mind looks like. And these are the insights in a way. And it is the roadmap. We use it to know where we're going, but we're not in fact, really um, uh, staying there or uh, being attached to it. It simply is. And to develop this understanding, we're seeing Dhamma as Dhamma, those mental states as mental states, uh, seeing things just as they are. And how are the four resting places of awareness cultivated and developed so that they fulfill the seven supports of awakening? When one meditates, resting one's awareness on the body, knowing it as only body, intent fully conscious and present, letting go of tension and distractions. One is not carried away by distractions, and there comes to be awareness. See, very, very simple. When one is not carried away, and there comes to be awareness, at that time the support of awakening of awareness becomes manifest. It is being developed, and it gradually matures by development. So very simple. Meditating with this awareness. Now we have this awareness, what do we do? Meditating with this awareness, one seeks wholesome states and discards unwholesome ones and completely understands one's mental states that arise using discernment. Whenever one is meditating with awareness, seeking wholesome states and discarding unwholesome ones, and completely understanding one's mental states that arise using discernment, at that time the support of awakening of discernment becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. Now this is also called investigation. Uh, some people um, call it um, curiosity. There, uh, there's all kinds of names for it which are very good also. Uh, it can only uh, bring us wonderful other perspectives. Um, interest is another good one taking interest in sorting out these states and choosing the good ones <laughs> so that we can uh, grow in wholesome states. Whenever there is seeking wholesome states and discarding unwholesome ones and, complete, and completely understanding one's mental states that arise using discernment, continually, enthusiastically. At that time, the support of awakening of inspiration becomes manifest, and it is being developed, and it gradually matures by development. This is what is usually translated as energy. Um, personally, I lean more towards uh, devotion or determination or energy is good but sometimes uh, it's a problem people put too much energy <laughs> force try to force it and that's not the way 
it's not this uh, really uh, strong energy forward pushing it's in fact the energy the energy that comes from liberating the mind the the energy it's this devotion to wholesome states to discernment to the practice which is the the step before With this inspired practice, spiritual joy arises. And see, this is a, a, a wonderful place where the Buddha uh, makes clear of what, what kind of joy he's in fact talking about. And this in Pali is piti niramisa. And this is not just... Uh, joy or um, the joy that we could have from all kinds of things which is not necessarily bad but we're speaking here of the joy of mental development of doing this practice over and over again and there's this niramisa is is um, <laughs> the literal translation for it is non carnal <laughs> or non, not fleshy it's not it's not associated with uh, the <laughs> the flesh or the physical body it's spiritual or mental joy so the joy of mental development and that's that's one of the rare places where the buddha in fact points that out adds that specific word to this word piti that we know exactly what that piti is whenever spiritual joy arises because of inspired practice at that time the supportive awakening of joy becomes manifest it is being developed and it gradually matures by development so see just by doing it 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 grows why because that's that's how the mind works that's how the mental conditioning works that's whatever we do we're conditioning the mind whether we like it or not if we do uh, all kinds of things uh, just because we're doing them just because by uh, repeating them for example they grow whether it's unwholesome or whether it's wholesome so here this is the beauty of this is that just by doing it it is being developed you don't have to make it more complicated than this so it's quite wonderful with this spiritual joy the body calms down and the mind calms down whenever the body calms down and the mind calms down because of spiritual joy at that time the support of awakening of calm becomes manifest it is being developed and it gradually matures on by development and another reason why this uh, sequence is quite wonderful is that it really explains how this process works how this these seven supports of awakening which are uh, explained by the Buddha so often uh, here they're really well expounded, very well explained. With this calmness of body, the happy mind becomes collected. Whenever the happy mind becomes unified by way of bodily calm, which came from joy. At that time, the support of awakening of mental collectedness becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. With this calm and collected mind, one steadily attends with discernment. There, this is how there comes to be more discernment, by nourishing these seven supports of awakening. And by just simply doing this, there will be more steadiness of mind which results in awareness steady what could steady awareness or steadiness of mind could be if not more awareness <laughs> so we are using this to have more discernment and then the wheel turns again 
Whenever one steadily attends with discernment by way of calm collectedness of mind, at that time the support of awakening of mental steadiness becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. And so here we find the Anapanasati the, is a bit of an excuse to read this sutta There's, because this is a, one of the suttas where the um, seven supports of awakening are the best explained, I find. I haven't found many more that are this well explained. And now, of course, he goes through sensations as sensations. He explains this whole process again with the seven supports of awakening, just being aware of sensations as sensations, letting go of tensions and distractions. And then mind as mind, and then mental states as mental states. And I will read it once more without too much explanation this time, just so we can soak it in a little bit more without me <laughs> um, spoiling it too much. And I will simply add that this whole sequence here is explained using the Satipatthanas. It is explained using the four foundations of mindfulness, body, feeling, or sensations, mind, and mental states. But these seven supports of, uh, of awakening also work the same way with the Brahma Viharas. When someone brings up metta, at that point, one is not carried away by distractions, and there comes to be awareness. When one is not carried away by, and there comes to be awareness, at that time, the support of awakening of awareness becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. So we can put the Brahma Viharas at the same place also and it works. <laughs> so it's not a completely different practice how we cultivate the Brahma Viharas. The seven supports of awakening they come to be also in the same way because these Brahma Viharas they come with awareness, they come with more discernment. Meditating with this awareness, one seeks wholesome states, the Brahma Viharas, and discard unwholesome ones, and completely understands one mental one's mental states that arise using discernment, same that we do. Whenever one is meditating with awareness, seeking wholesome state, discarding unwholesome ones, and completely understanding one's mental states that arise using discernment, at that time the support of awakening of discernment becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. Whenever there is seeking wholesome states, discarding unwholesome ones, and completely understanding of one, one's mental states that arise using discernment, continually, enthusiastically, at that time the support of awakening of inspiration or determination becomes manifest, it is being developed, and it gradually matures by development. With this inspired practice, spiritual joy arises. Whenever spiritual joy arises because of inspired practice, at that time the support of awakening of joy becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. With this spiritual joy, the body calms down and the mind calms down. Whenever the body calms down and the mind calms down because of spiritual joy, at that time the support of awakening of calm becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. With this calmness of body, 
the happy mind becomes collected. Whenever the happy mind becomes unified by way of bodily calm, at that time the support of awakening of mental collectedness becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. With this calm and collected mind, one steadily attends with discernment. Whenever one steadily attends with discernment by way of calm collectedness of mind, at that time the support of awakening of mental steadiness becomes manifest. It is being developed and it gradually matures by development. So now this is how the seven, how the four resting places of awareness fulfill the seven supports of awakening. And how are the seven supports of awakening developed and cultivated to fulfill release by understanding? So now we're taking it even further taking these seven supports of awakening and working with them a little bit differently. And this makes sure that we are always practicing in the right direction. Here one develops the awakening support of awareness which comes from letting go, calming down, release and culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening support of discernment which comes from letting go, calming down, release and culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening support of inspiration or determination which comes from letting go, calming down, release and culminates in complete surrender. See here, it's not about putting out this energy, it's in fact the, this determination, this inspiration, this devotion that comes from letting go, calming things down. One develops the awakening support of joy, which comes from letting go, calming down, release, and that culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening support of calm, which comes from letting go, calming down, release, and which culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening support of mental collectedness, which comes from letting go, calming down, release, and culminates in complete surrender. One develops the awakening support of steadiness which comes from letting go, calming down, release and culminates in complete surrender. Now, some of you might be familiar with the six R's and this is one of the places where we can find it, uh, not completely, but this sequence when translated in this way. This is this letting go, calming down, release and culminates in complete surrender. This is viveka nisitang, viraga nisitang, nirodha nisitang, vosaga parinami. And translated in this way, it is fairly close to these six R's. And this, um, this sequence uh, of uh, letting go, calming down, release, is a, a sequence that came very often. Uh, the Buddha used this sequence to explain, for example, the seven supports of awakening. He always explained them in this way, this shorter version. And also we can find the, in the suttas where he explains, he breaks down each of the factors of the eight spoke path with these factors also with letting go, calming down. For example, wise understanding that comes from letting go, calming down, release and culminates in complete surrender. Then wise intention, wise speech, wise action, wise living, wise uh, practice, wise awareness, and wise samadhi, wise meditation. 
that have each of these qualities and so this these these four qualities are fairly important for us to remember because they keep us practicing in the right way always letting go always calming things down never getting stuck on the one particular thing and always letting it flow letting it so that we can continue along this is how to develop and cultivate the seven supports of awakening to fulfill release by understanding so practice in this way the Buddha is basically saying that you will get to the end of the path <laughs> and of course there is there is always uh, more things that can be said but this this sutta or this explanation this discourse of the buddha was also quite well known and famous even at the time of the buddha because we find for example um, we find in the samyutta nikaya the connected discourses of uh, the buddha there is a Samyutta, there's a whole chapter on Anapanasati. And um, in this chapter, there is, well, there, there's, of course, um, every sutta is about Anapanasati, this uh, sequence that we uh, heard at the beginning. And one of, uh, one of these is uh, Ananda asking, but Bhante, is there is there a way in which by cultivating one thing it fulfills seven things and it fulfills another four things and it fulfills a uh, release by understanding and so uh, this is a clever way that ananda ananda was the buddha's assistant so he was um, when nobody would ask for a Dhamma talk, for example, when they, uh, when they were somewhere or uh, they didn't really know that you know, the Buddha won't really teach if, unless he's asked to. <laughs> so, so when people didn't know, Ananda just went to the Buddha and he said, well, Ananda, they, probably this crowd could use you know, this, this discourse, but he would ask him in a fairly clever way. <laughs> so is this Bhante, is there a way in which there's one thing that could be developed that fulfills four things and then seven things and then release? And then he explains again. So this sutta comes back again in the Samyutta Nikaya. It's slightly different, but very, very, very close. And um, having this wonderful overview of uh, these meditation instructions i think one one of the things that we can do because these are so um important instructions in the, the suttas they they are referred to quite a lot so i i feel like it is quite important for us to understand well uh, what these are and how they work and how to properly use them and it's not because we are using, for example, the Brahma Viharas that we cannot use some of these tools. And, uh, for example, at some point, well, yes, there might be bodily tension that we can relax. Or there might be some things in the mind that come up and we can simply, oh, maybe calm down these things which is very, very similar to using the 6R process, really. But um, we can also use any of these specific tools to support our practice, to nourish our practice, to feed our practice. And so we can progress and understand a bit more uh, all of the ways that the Buddha had to explain the Dhamma, which is quite wonderful. And on this, I will leave some time for questions, if there are any.
Very good. <laughs> well, it's day eight, so there are chances that people just really understand <laughs> everything. <laughs> and maybe um, very uh, far advanced in the in the path. Good, good. You're having very good smiles, so that's telling me a lot. So that's very good. <laughs> okay. Good. Well, I hope that um, you can carry these instructions with you and use them um, along with your practice wherever you are. Uh, some people. Um, find it uh, helpful to have uh, many tools to their uh, to their practice so feel uh, feel like uh, this is uh, an open toolbox an open teaching that you can use and uh, um, to always move towards more wholesome states of mind and that's the most important and on this, let's share our merits and I will let you meditate or do what you want to do. <laughs> Soka patta jani soka hondu sabbe pipani no Idang no punyang na sabbe satta numo dantu Sabba sampati siddhya Aga satta chabumata Deva naga mahitika Punyang tanga numo ritwa Chirang rakhantu buddha sasasanang May suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share these merits that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty powers, share these merits of ours. May they long protect the Buddha Sasana Sadhu Sadhu Sadhu. Have a good evening or day and pleasure to see you all. I will see you tomorrow. Take good care. Keep your smiles going. Very good. <laughs>